Imagine a world where machines not only think and learn, but also possess a spark of life. It's a scenario straight out of a science fiction novel, yet today, we stand on the brink of this extraordinary reality. But how can we tell if an artificial intelligence, a being born out of code and circuits, is truly alive? This question is not just a philosophical puzzle, it's a crucial dilemma that could redefine our understanding of life itself. By the end of this video, you'll discover 10 ways or methods scientists use to tell if an AI is alive. Let's start. Number 1. The Turing Test The first method of determining if artificial intelligence is alive is through the Turing Test. Back in 1950, a mathematician named Alan Turing suggested this test as a way to assess intelligence in machines. Imagine a scenario where a person talks to two entities, one human and one computer, without knowing which is which. If the person can't reliably figure out which one is the machine, we consider the machine intelligent, and it's said to have passed the Turing test. The big problem with the Turing test is that it's more about checking if a machine can trick you, rather than figuring out if it genuinely understands things. Even though it's called a test, the machine is just pretending to talk like a human without understanding the meaning. This difference is important when we look at today's language models like ChatGPT. They're super smart at learning, but at the end of the day, they're similar to the word predictions on your phone guessing what word comes next without a real understanding. Another thing in the Turing test is that intelligence might exist without consciousness. Language models like ChatGPT can learn and solve problems, which some view as intelligence, even though they may lack the experience of being conscious. Several language models such as Lambda have already shown the ability to pass the Turing test despite this distinction. Number 2. The AI Consciousness Test In 2017, a Scientific American article introduced an alternative to the Turing test called the AI Consciousness Test, known as ACT. Professors Susan Schneider, a professor of philosophy and cognitive science at UConn, and Edwin L. Turner, a professor of astrophysical sciences at Princeton, proposed this test. It shows the importance of experiencing consciousness to comprehend related concepts. Topics such as death, which is loss of consciousness, afterlife, which is consciousness apart from the body, and swapping bodies, which are other beings having separate consciousness, were considered important in their proposed test. If a being shows an understanding of topics like death, the afterlife, or swapping bodies, it suggests a potential experience of consciousness. In the context of modern chatbots, they mimic the language of conscious beings and learn from conversations held by conscious individuals. If advanced but non-conscious artificial intelligence tries to deceive us into thinking they're conscious, their knowledge of human consciousness, acquired through training, might play a role in creating that illusion. Carrying out the test on ChatGPT 3.5 Turbo when asked about its thoughts on the afterlife it said it doesn't have opinions, and that it's just a chatbot. It seems it has rules in place to avoid confusion. Now, whether this is a pass or fail in the consciousness test is up for debate. What do you think? Number 3. A theory-heavy approach The next way is using a theory-heavy approach. In creating their criteria, the authors believed that consciousness is tied to how systems handle information regardless of their composition, whether it's neurons, computer chips, or something else. This method is called computational functionalism. They also assumed that theories of consciousness based on neuroscience, which involves studying brain scans and other methods in humans and animals, can be used to understand AI as well. Based on these ideas, the team picked six theories and pulled out a list of signs that suggest something is conscious. Consider the global workspace theory which says that humans and animals have different specialized systems, like modules for tasks such as seeing and hearing. These modules work on their own, but share information by coming together into a single system. To see if an AI system follows the global workplace theory, you'd look at its structure and how information moves around. 
The report looks at big language models, such as ChatGPT, and mentions that they seem to show some signs connected to the global workspace theory. But the study doesn't say that any AI system right now is a solid candidate for consciousness. At least, not yet. Number 4. The Consciousness Checklist Recently, 19 experts collaborated to write a report about consciousness and artificial intelligence. The paper, which involved cognitive scientists, psychologists, neuroscientists, computer scientists, and philosophers, suggested a different way to spot possible consciousness in AI. Instead of using a test based on behavior, they suggested a checklist of indicator properties. The idea is that the more indicators an AI shows, the more likely it is to be considered conscious. So for this checklist, the crew took a look at some top-notch scientific theories about consciousness. From each theory, they picked out the essential qualities that shout conscious. What they ended up with is a set of 14 indicators that hints at the potential for sentience. It's a pretty big change from the old ways. Behavior-based tests can be tricky since programs can be made to copy that behavior. Plus, they're always tied to human judgment. This new approach is trying to shake things up. The report wraps up by saying that based on their analysis, existing AI systems don't seem to be conscious. But here's the twist. It also hints that there aren't any clear technical roadblocks to creating AI systems that meet these consciousness indicators. So in theory, a super smart computer program could tick all the boxes for consciousness and yet not experience what it's like to be conscious. Quite the mind bender. Number 5. The Coffee Test In recent years, Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak introduced the Coffee Test, a robotics-focused intelligence test. To ace it, a machine would need to walk into a regular American home and figure out how to make a cup of coffee successfully. So far, no machine has passed these tests. But even if they did, it would only show smart behavior in real-life situations. Not necessarily sentience. Think about it. Would we claim someone isn't sentient just because they can't hold a sophisticated conversation or operate a coffee machine in an unfamiliar house? Young children, for example, would struggle with such a test. Number 6. The Empathy Test Another way is empathy, which is like stepping into someone else's world, seeing things from their perspective and feeling what they feel. It's that human connection we get from shared experiences. Empathy means grasping and sharing the emotions of others. It's about imagining what it's like to be in someone else's shoes, even if you haven't been in that exact situation. Being empathetic involves being kind, caring and supportive, fostering connections, showing compassion, and building meaningful relationships with others. Would you now say artificial intelligence has all those traits? In the artificial intelligence world, these smart systems can understand and react to humans based on the data they're trained on. Imagine those big language models trained on tons of voice, text, and video stuff. They've gotten pretty good at spotting and copying emotions like empathy. But here's the catch. AI isn't naturally empathetic. It's not feeling emotions. It's just mimicking what it learned from all that data. Number 7. The Global Workspace Theory So there's this way of thinking about consciousness called the Global Workspace Theory, created by cognitive scientist Bernard Bars and Stan Franklin in the late 80s. They crafted it to explain a bunch of pairs of conscious and unconscious processes. Imagine consciousness as a mental theater in this theory, where different mental processes battle for attention in a central workspace. Whatever info grabs attention gets broadcasted globally to other mental systems. Now, in advanced AI, they do have parallel modules and a sort of workspace, but they're missing that global broadcast and state-dependent attention found in conscious beings. Number 8. The Recurrent Processing Theory Moving on to the recurrent processing theory, imagine this theory suggesting that consciousness pops up when information takes a loop-to-loop -loop path within neural networks. Now, applying this to AI, it's like saying a conscious system should be able to use past info in what it's doing now and what it plans to do next. That's the fancy term for it, algorithmic recurrence. 
But while recurrent neural networks and AI do have this loop thing going on, they often struggle to organize and make sense of the sensory input they get. That knack for creating organized and meaningful representations, which is a big part of human-like consciousness, it tends to be a bit tricky for them. Number 9. Attention Schema Theory Attention Schema Theory suggests that consciousness comes about when a system can kind of picture its attention. In AI, we're starting to see attention mechanisms, but they're not quite the self-aware attention schema that this theory talks about. Here's the thing. To be conscious, a system should be able to predict and handle its attention. That self-awareness aspect is pretty crucial, but current AI systems are still figuring out how to nail it down. Number 10. High-Order Theories High-order theories of consciousness say that for something to be conscious, it should know what's going on in its mind. In the AI world, this would mean a system should be able to create perceptions that go beyond just what it's sensing and have a bit of self-awareness or metacognitive monitoring. Now, there are AI systems out there making perceptions and doing some basic metacognition stuff, but they're not quite at the level of complex agency and belief-guided actions that we see in conscious beings. So, bottom line, we're still pretty far from having artificial intelligence with real consciousness. If you've made it this far, comment down below with the word 100% to confirm that you've received the knowledge from this video. For more interesting topics, make sure you watch the recommended video that you see on the screen right now. Thanks for watching.